Call this meeting to order. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Happy belated Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Okay, could we get approval? So moved. We have Commissioner Wincher approved Second. the... Minutes to the meeting, seconded by Commissioner Lemire. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, there aren't. Mr. Chair, I'll move on the agenda. I have Second. a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Wincher. All in favor, aye. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Public hearing, tobacco... Ordinance, Brad. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Good morning, Good morning. Brad. So this morning we are uh, requesting a change to the uh, tobacco ordinance. Uh, it has been posted and legally published as required uh, by law. And really the only changes is we've talked about tobacco issues over the past couple months. Uh, noting that the tobacco fees are in the ordinance didn't make a lot of sense since commissioners are managing the fee schedule every year. This way we would not have to do two public hearings if we were to change a fee again. So um, really it is just referring us back to the fee schedule was the request of the ordinance change. And so it was posted and um, I think we're ready for a, the public hearing. Okay, we're going to open this meeting up for public comments and questions. I will call three times. Um, is there any comment from the public? Is there any comment from the public? Is there any comment from the public? Are there any mail-in written comments? Nope, for I did the not report? receive any, Brad, did you? I did not receive any, I don't know if anybody came by to pick up a copy of the ordinance at the Auditor Treasurer's no. Office, but no. Nope. So. Okay, then public comment period is closed. We will take action on this. Um, and there is a request for board action in your packet. Yes. Okay, can I get a motion to accept uh, the so moved, Mr. Ordinance. Chair. Got a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, Second. seconded by Commissioner Lemire. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, just for the sake of clarification, if we turn to Section 8. Yep. And my question is the only things that's, that have changed here is what's stricken. Correct. And that's the, we've got the line that's. Yep. Okay. And then there's just, it's added to. Yep. yep. First and then added. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. That's the only thing that I have. Okay, any other questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'm gonna ask Sarah Pratt just to come up and introduce her. She is the new human services supervisor. As you might, might recall, we approved a new uh, human service supervisor position. So Sarah is her first week on the job Hello, as Sarah. human service Hello, supervisor. Good morning. So I thought I'd bring her to introduce you because she will be coming to present various reports from time to time. And so she's new been with- supervisor, but familiar face. Yeah, she's yes. been with Morrison County since 1980. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can kick him under the yeah. table as a baby. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, what? <laughs> yeah, now she's got a twin sister. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but she's been in social services for a while. She's gonna be housed in public health and uh, she'll have some both public health and social service programs. So we're excited to have her on board. I'm very excited. Sarah's going to okay. do a very Welcome good job. Welcome to the new time. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. It'll be Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think the first thing in uh, my board packet for social services, and the only thing, is a request uh, to approve the screening grant provided by the Minnesota Department of Human Services in the amount of 20775 Whoops, I think I did yeah, a typo. You got yes. a period in the wrong spot. Yes, 20000 seven hundred and seventy five dollars so um, this is not a new grant but it's one that is now required to be signed by the county board chair and is a and is a grant contract so um, we use these funds uh, these funds are earned by all of the screenings that corrections and social services do on kids in placement and then we we uh, take this money and we use it for uh, mental health costs for kids who don't have insurance or are unable to pay. So it fills a little bit of a gap for us. It's not a lot of money, but 
Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we got Second. a motion by Commissioner Lemire, seconded by Commissioner Wincher. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. At the end of the day, Brad, a check comes from the Minnesota Department of Human Services to Morrison County for the $20,000, but ultimately it comes from our own people. Correct. It's work that social workers and corrections officers are doing um, with okay. kids they work with. Very good. And we do have that amount changed to twenty thousand seven. It's correct in the grant. This is the RBA. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes. okay. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. We have a motion and second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next is the public health report, and I think believe the first thing on the agenda is the approval of the two thousand eighteen food, beverage, and lodge, lodging establishment licenses. Uh, one thing that I did differently this year is I asked Mary Handelin to. And maybe it's been done in the past, I'm not sure, but I did ask her to put all of the fees just to show the commissioners how much we earn from all the licensing fees from the establishments that uh, we license. And so um, this is a, a list that happens every year. And um, so I'd ask for approval of all those food, beverage, and lodging licenses. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Wincher, seconded by Second. Commissioner Lemire. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chair, I just want to remind everyone that this is a program that we choose um, to participate in just serving constituents a little bit more um, uh, closer to home so to speak than having the state administer that and so while the fees you know when you see that it's difficult we are less than what the state would charge if they were doing that but we're trying to make sure that those are as even as possible when it you know it makes sense to look at those and over the years we've adjusted those accordingly just because it isn't a program that we have to do but I think our, our constituents in those resort or those establishment owners appreciate the fact that it's a local delivered service instead of from the state. So, so Mr. Chair, Ms. Gruber, if it wasn't Morrison County, I, I believe I know the answer to the question, but if it wasn't Morrison County that was doing this, the state of Minnesota, Department of Health, Department of Health would come in some and strange person would walk into any one of our Stranger, <laughs> sorry, a stranger would walk into any one of our establishments in Morrison County as opposed to a face from, from, and, from yes. Morrison yeah. County. And I don't know that they'd be a stranger if they do this every year yeah. from the state. However, for instance, when an establishment is being built, yeah. we're able to go out and help them. I know of an establishment that was built recently or in the last couple of years, Michelle actually went out three times <laughs> to make sure their kitchen yeah. would meet licensing requirements where I'm not necessarily sure the state would have that type of customer service. I so totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just as a reminder, was all the pointers. Okay, we have any more discussion? Does this have anything to do with the taxes being paid? We're going to talk. That's these next. Are all, um, these are all paid in full. Yes, these Very are good. good. Yep. Did we have a motion a second on already? Yeah, I yeah. made a motion. Yep. It might second the discussion. Yep. yep. All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, <clears throat> motion carries. So your second list, a part of our uh, ordinance requires taxes to be paid in full prior to a license being provided. Um, so what we do is we provide a license contingent upon payment in full of taxes so they will not receive their license until uh, their taxes are paid in full. And so the next list are those establishments that have still not paid their taxes. And what I would say in talking with Mary that all of them have talked with her, all the arrangements have been made, and these are not uncommon for these establishments to pay. I know one will come in today. They normally come in on the 30th and pay. The one normally comes in on the 2nd and pays after, they, after the weekend. So it's nothing that we're concerned about. We have no, uh, they will all come in and pay. So, But we still make that contingent because they're not paid in full. Yep. Do we need a motion on that? No. What's that? Oh, we, you need one, yes. 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 You yeah. don't yeah. have one yet, yes. Right. <laughs> I'll move on that. Okay, Mr. we Chair. have a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded Second. by Commissioner Lemire. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor, yeah, You know what, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, okay. if they don't pay their taxes, how long can they operate without having their taxes updated? Um, not without very long. License, with all yeah. the license, I should say, too. Uh, not very long. That's why we do a continued license, because we do want to work with these establishments. So we will give them some time. If we don't, if Mary doesn't hear from them by the, about the 15th of January, we will make some phone calls and say, we're going to need to pull this license if you don't take care of the taxes. So, so. come, Mr. Chair, so come February 1st, would they still be in business? 
they would more than likely not be in business okay. unless again they're continuing to talk with us and say you know i'm yeah. going to pay this this yep. this and this so we can give them a license and make arrangements for being yeah. paid but they cannot operate without, without a, a valid license, license. yeah yep. okay all right we have a motion and a second is there any other discussion if not all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries and then the last thing I have on the agenda is the approval of three new members to the Public Health Advisory Committee. Uh, Ann March is from District 1, and uh, she is a prior public health employee. She currently works for the Minnesota Department of Health and is very excited to be a member of the Public Health Advisory Committee. I think we'll bring some very good expertise to that committee. Uh, the second person is District 3, Carrie Meek. She lives in the city of Royalton and works for Royalton Schools, I believe, as a Phi Ed teacher. And then part of our public health advisory committee requires a registered nurse. And so Nancy Matlock, who works for Horizon Health, is willing to be a member of our public health advisory committee. And so I'd ask for a motion to approve all three of those members. I'll make a motion. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Second. Lemire, seconded by Commissioner Jelinski. Is there any other questions? Not all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. And I think that's all I had this morning. Good Thank job, you. Brad. Thank you. Good job, Brad. Brad. No. Coffee break. Yeah. <laughs> Already. I may want to take just a little breather here because Do we? I'm trying to get a hold of people here. Because Beth, Beth is in here. Beth isn't here. She's working on pit. No, the other Beth. Beth is oh, our next Beth. person. Well, I don't know who's coming for sure. From Do you know what's Beth? Well, according to what I have in front of me, it is. From extension. Yes, why don't you? Should we go ahead? And I'm being like 10 minutes early, yeah. but hey. Hello, Beth. How are you? Merry I'm Christmas. Good. Happy New Year. Yeah, to you as well. We have the extension report. Beth is here. Yeah. So I'm back. I'm back from maternity leave. And I had a few months off, so I've been back about three weeks now and just trying to get caught up. But we had a nice interim in my absence and I noticed the Morrison County record was kind enough to print out her stuff all the time. So I said, I'm just gonna run my stuff under her name. <laughs> but um, just planning season for us. So, you know, I've, um, I was involved with the Salsa Fest with the SFA, which is the Sustainable Farming Association. That was September 16th. I was still in the hospital with my newborn. So I wasn't able to attend, but they had a pretty good day, wish they had better weather and it um, is going to happen again. So that date for next year is already September 22nd. You'll see that on my December report when it comes out. And um, also just getting more involved with the local food stuff. So Sprout <coughs> is, has some things going on. Greenhouse 101 is coming up here in a couple of weeks, uh, the 16th actually. And then conferences, fruit and veg conferences down in St. Cloud coming up and I'll be in attendance for that. It's a great way to network as well as learn on my own. And um, Emily wanted me to pass along. Farming is in tough times right now, so they have some financial uh, workshops of how to you know, keep spirits up and what they may uh, do to maybe keep things afloat. And I noticed not only Extension is involved with that, but I think it was the MBA has some classes and stuff out there as well. So not uh, the area that I'm directly involved with, but we certainly <coughs> help support each other in whatever way we can. So if you want to get that out to any of your constituents that you think might benefit from that. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm the only person down in the office today. Uh, we have, of course, pesticide books and tests available for the farmers right now. So if any of the farmers need to get recertified, they can come in and get the test from us. And then uh, those farm account books, they tend to still be, some people are still doing it handwritten. So those are in our offices as well. Any questions? Otherwise I'm back and I'll be around and you'll hear from me more and more. Well, welcome back. Thanks. First of all, and our baby, a baby girl, baby, baby boy, girl. Baby you didn't read it in the paper. I'm I sorry, paid the I seven not. bucks to have it not. in there. <laughs> I did not. I did not. I have a little Danica Rose. Well, so she. And is how much did she weigh? Six and a half pounds, a or keeper, six six. Huh? She keeper. is a keeper. There She's a cutie. Go. So, it's nice to work in this office too, because I can get home a little quicker. 
uh, to see my baby. So, so is that your first girl? That's yes. our first little baby. Yeah. First, little first baby. all together. Oh, yeah. Well. So That's house is not so quiet anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Get to sleep all night, right? No, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Here yeah. It here, it, here it is. She never <laughs> usually gets to wail. I'm pretty fast to get to her, but uh, we enjoy having her, and it's been definitely a shift in our household. Good for you guys. Congratulations. All right. That's Thank it for me. Much. Happy New Year to you, Happy and we'll see you in 2018. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks. Have a good Bye, day. Guys. Budget and finance, Steve. Good morning, good morning, Steve. Good morning. I have one item. It's a fairly quick one, uh, hopefully. Shouldn't be too much here. It's uh, our annual, re uh, according to GASB 54, we have to do this, uh, approve our assigned, restricted, and committed fund balances for the year. Um, I do have uh, a new one, and that would be for um, the sheriff's office. He was asking for an extra, to put some money aside to help him build that shed or something that he's looking at doing someday. Sooner than later, I'm not sure, but. <laughs> Just so assigning anything that would be over in 2017. Yep. Or under. And here's the listing is on the page there is assigned. We have restricted, which is law library, recorders, technology, sheriff's forfeitures. Those are restricted. And what, me, what that means is that they're the only ones that really have control over that. It's, it's money, the state statutes set aside for them specifically. All the assigned is what you have signed or allowed departments to assign to different <clears throat> You know, different uh, like jail, boat, water, <coughs> replacing boats, replacing vehicles, different things like that. So, and what we try to do every year when we set the budget is I try to look at fund balances and, you know, like end of 17, if I, you know, if we see that we're using so much fund balance and we have a lot in reserve, we'll try to use some of that so we're not retaxing. And like for so for 2019, when we start budgeting, I kind of look at 17 when we start budgeting. It's, I'm always a year behind because we just have to catch up, but. But I always look at this fund balance and try to use it because our fund balances are in good shape and you know we want to keep them there and and yet I still look at it to make sure I'm comfortable using a certain amount of fund balance when needed and this is kind of helps me by doing this is helps me try to determine what we need and for what reasons there's usually a purpose to why we put this money aside so mr. chair Steve's fund balance could be equated as a savings account basically yes and you always want to keep I'm a, you're the money guy. You, we always want to keep a certain amount of funds in our savings account. But we never want to have necessary, I shouldn't say never. We don't necessarily want to have too much in our savings account. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Balancing that on where the needs are, what maybe the plan is. Um, a lot of these, you know, we have folks that there are different departments that have vehicles. You know, vehicles don't last yeah. forever, so it's important to make sure you set aside money to offset that cost when it comes, um, but not levy all of that in one year so it's a up and down. You know, that's an example of things that we want to plan for and be planful, yeah. um, but yet not save too much. You, yeah. you know, there's no, there's no magical formula that says it has to be a certain way or another, but we like to try to balance it to make sure it's reasonable in terms of saving for things that are upcoming that we can predict and then being ready if there are things that are happening that we can't predict. Is part of why it's there. If, there if, if we if, if the board in the past hasn't wouldn't haven't allowed us to, to do something like this, we'd be probably issuing a lot more capital equipment notes annually to help oh. offset. Okay. You know, same thing with Steve out at the landfill. If if you didn't allow him to put money aside to save for the new cell, we'd probably be having to go out to debt and issue more debt, which which we haven't done, but because we've been able to do this program here to put money aside into a savings account. Which is good for us because you know when we issue debt, you know it's more than just issuing the debt. There's there's costs of issuing debt, and every debt issue probably has a sixty thousand dollar tag that you don't get anything out of other than paying attorneys and financial people their fees and different things like that. So this has been good for us. We've used it wisely over the years, and just that GASB fifty four now says we need to put it into into a writing form. We've always done it. We just now they wanted it more into a policy type thing, and this is just. A listing of the ones that we're planning on putting aside for the end of 17. Well, it was like the county garage in Piers when it was time to build it. We had the money set aside to go ahead and do the project without having to tax people more for it yep. at a later date. So, um, okay, can I get a motion? Just one question for Steve. What's SCHA? 
South Country Health Alliance. Oh, okay. yeah. And then what, what's uh, tax collection city schools? Um, well, at the end of the year, there's in our tax collections fund, there's, there's money there that hasn't been settled out yet. So we have... I mean, to go back, go back to, to the schools. Schools, the gotcha. cities, and the county has a share of that also. It just hasn't been... We've collected it, we just haven't distributed gotcha. it yet. So. All right. Thank and you. that, and so I just throw that in here because that's that's part of the whole perfect balance Thanks. of things. And South Country Health Alliances are equity in that joint powers, correct, Steve? Well, it's it's what it's not our equity necessarily. Oh, it's what, it's what we it's our investment, is. our original investment in yes. South Country is that I think our equity might be a little better than that yes. at this time. And that they report to us on our and that's within our whole financial statement, yep. not in our fund balance. Yep. That's what it is. I've never changed this because the equity is only good as the day is. Mm -hmm. that we yeah. sign it you know and that could change right. and so I've always just left it at what we've invested so far That's right. so that really isn't a fund then that one is it more of a it's investment? more of a cash investment type deal I've kind of put it there because it does get separate recognition just because of how we account for it in our financial statement they report to us every year on where they're sitting and what our actual equity is and this is just kind of keeping open and that's why it's kind of on the cash report you see every month that's why it's always kind of below all the other cash because it is it's technically, it's, if we get that back, if they were ever to fold for whatever reason and we ever to get something back out of it, that's the measurement, the measurement of what, if we've gained or lost on this investment. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yep. If I may, Mr. Chair, you have balance as of December 31st, 2016. Why is that? And the next question is, if that's the case, that buffer enforcement aid wasn't even brought up until 2017. Yep. Yep, and there should be no balance. I think I might have copied something over there, maybe, if there's a balance there. Well, there's, there's no balance. It says nope. new, but I'm just saying if that's as of end of 2000, you just must have put that in as a line item. Well, I put 2016 because that's the last finished year that we have. Okay. We have not finished 2017 to adjust. We're, I'm saying these are the ones that we have. If there's any new ones, which is the buffer, right. is a new one, I'm going to add a balance to that. Next year when I bring this in, It'll be as of 2017, and it'll okay. show a balance. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can only be as current as the current year that's over with. Because <coughs> when this year is over with, then I'll start calculating all these new balances. And I'll, okay. and I'll bring in in the first quarter, with the, or sometime in the first quarter with the 2000 end of the year report, we'll have a listing of all these new balances in them. So, so that's what I'm working on. I'm just getting the approval to say, hey, this is what we're going to set aside for 2018 and forward, but you know, like I said, it's I'm only in the year that I can get decent numbers with. So. I'll move on this, Mr. Chair. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by Second. Commissioner Wincher. Is there any further discussion? If not, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Lemire? Aye. Commissioner Wincher? Aye. Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. And aye. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. I just want to make a point that Steve has been very, very good about helping this week with the short staff and what's going on in our office. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay. County board warrants. That's what we got next. Yep. Well, public works. We're public having. works. Public works shows next. Well, oh, but we don't actually have. It's not a like in your board packet because it is a. Do you want to just? My paper yeah. says it's, it's board technically warrants. the warrants, but there's not a. I never got a paper. Well, you, the I never did the I didn't get an agenda. <laughs> well, You're sorry. dealing with second rate health we'll share. today we'll because share. I am not a problem. I tell you, we have all three of us can look at it. There we go. Doug, do you have anything? I will share. You don't have any agenda items, though, right? Just the warrants. No, just the warrants. Okay, can I get a motion? We got a motion by Commissioner Wincher. everything paid. We got a motion by Commissioner Wincher. We have a second by Commissioner Lemire. This is a roll call vote. Commissioner Lemire. Aye. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. And aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Happy New Year. You guys are all so excited here, you know. <laughs> okay. okay, public works. You know what? I think you got the hang of it. <laughs> I got it. It's my last meeting of the year. I got it. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hi, John. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning guys. John, welcome. Hey, thank you. We're here to make sure that you guys don't get out of here early. That's right. That's not a problem. We gave you three hours, so I hope you can use it all up. John's a little <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
Well, for, for viewers that don't know uh, who our guest is, this is John Shalanka. He is the Superintendent of Maintenance for Public Works. And each year, uh, the Federal Highway Administration admi estimates that uh, approximately 1,300 people are killed and 117,000 major injury accidents occur from crashes that occur on snowy, icy, or slushy roads. That doesn't incorporate pain and suffering for family and friends, the disruption to commerce, property damage, all of those type of things that are affected by our snow and ice control maintenance program. So what all that comes down to is the need for a robust and uh, our residents demand a, a quality winter snow and ice control maintenance program. And so John and I thought with us being in the heart of uh, Minnesota's winter season, that this might be the appropriate time to come forward and present to the board the elements that we have to provide that service to the residents and users of our highway system. And so John has put together this presentation uh, so that we can convey that information and try to answer any questions the board may have relative to how we accomplish this. So I'm gonna ha have John pick this up and if you have any questions, just raise them and we'll try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, so anyway, put a little packet together here. You can see up on the screen um, <coughs> how we handle snow and ice control. Um, just uh, get us back in memory. Our season started this year on the opener of deer hunting, which was number November 4. So a number of our employees were, were not in their deer stands. So anyway, they're committed. They came in and we got the job done. Just the difference between last year and this this year on Christmas, uh, we've seen temperatures of 25 below windshield. Last year we had an inch of rain on Christmas Day, if you recall. So we were sanding that. But it's always different. Every year is different. Um, Anyway, so we have 727 miles of road. We cover 450 are on our county state aid highway system, 237 are on our county road system, and we have 40 miles of gravel. So we have a large area to cover. Um, some tools I use uh, in determining um, to help me decide when to go out and when not to go out. Um, I'm constantly monitoring radar. Um, it, it's 24-7. Um, one of the handiest tools is the MDSS system, which is the Maintenance Decision Support System. <clears throat> what that does is uh, <clears throat> it, it breaks down the weather from zero to 24 hours out, hour by hour. So it shows me the rate of snow accumulation. Um, if I were to put trucks out on the road, what's the roads going to turn to? If I don't put trucks out on the road, will the roads stay compacted? Uh, it shows wind speed on there things like that so I can kind of always look and say okay the storm looks like it's gonna end at 3 in the morning I can get trucks out on the road so it's been a real handy tool um, <clears throat> you also have to do a, a drive I get up early and hop in the truck and, and drive roads um, I uh, check them as far as braking distance if I can stop in a how short a distance I can stop I'm always looking at my brake lights see if the snow is dusting up maybe the traffic will take care of it this time um, a lot of times I'll get out of the pickup, take my foot and, and rub it on the pavement to say, oh, this snow is not very sticky or to come off or it kind of gives me a good idea. Uh, I do view a few cameras. Um, MnDOT has one uh, north of last trip on 25, so I utilize that one. Uh, there's a private gentleman down by Gutwell's Corner that has a weather station and he has a website, so I pop on that one just to save me some distance from driving to the eastern part of the county. Uh, another good website to use is the uh, MnDOT's 511 site. They have cameras throughout the whole state and also in their plow trucks they're putting cameras. So when you see the cameras out in Morrison County on the MnDOT highways, they have cameras in their trucks so you can see their road conditions. So I will take a look at, at that also. Uh, timing is critical because we don't have the luxury of multiple crews. I have one crew to work with and so the max we want to run our crew is from 12 to 14 hours. And so, and, and the other thing is a lot of times if we're, I gotta allow some lead time because by the time I decide when the trucks are going out, um, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to have the crew in. And uh, I, uh, I, I think the longest time we, wa we went out was the Argo storm. 
Yeah, there were. That was 16 hours that the operators. Yep, were and that was last year, November 18th. The wet storm, did you call it? Argos, they named it last year. Oh, I don't remember that. That was a real hard impact storm, wasn't it? it yes. Those were just. Like, <coughs> we had people stuck on Highway 10 north yeah. of Randall. Yeah. That's that's that. Yeah. yeah. So timing is critical that we don't get too late on the roads because then the compaction builds up and then it's going to take a lot more effort to get the roads clean. And, uh, if and I then, may, Mr. Chair, John, yep. you know, with your mapping and all that, yep. we have a very long county. Yep. So, and I, I, my question would be, how do you determine, okay, it may not be snowing out by Hillman, but yet it's snowing by Swanville, and you live X here, yep. do you get, do you call phone calls and you call people, or what um, do you do? I try to cover as much ground by myself, okay. and then at times I need help, so I'll call in my foreman, or my assistant foreman out of Pierce to, to help out because you run out of time in the morning. You get up, you start checking roads, and uh, it takes a while. I mean, you're 38 miles from, the, from Royalton to, to Motley. You're 40 miles east and west from Upsala to Gutwell's Corner. And so you can burn up a lot of time in a hurry, and you just run out of time. You know, I, at some point down the road, I see probably some camera placements within the county just pointing at the, the road surface would maybe eliminate some of, some of that. But for now, we got the two to use, and, and besides the MnDOT plow trucks that have them. But uh, anyway, so it gets to be a challenge on that. Um, some of the factors determ determining the snow and ice control decisions. If we have a lot of snow or a lot of accumulating snow, it's a pretty easy decision. We know we got to get it off the road. It's these nuisance snows that are one to two inches. What do you do? And somebody's got to make that decision, so I, I have to make it. And, and you win on some and lose on, on others. But uh, what I'm looking for, you know, is... Uh, the moisture in the snow, if there's a little compaction to it, and then I'm also looking at what the uh, weather conditions are coming behind that. If we're going to have uh, warmer temperatures come in, the, the road temps are going to come up, you know what, that road's going to take care of it by itself and be melted by 10, 11 o'clock. And there's other times you're getting a cold front behind that and it's not going to come off so we need to get it off. And then there's situations where it's kind of a fluffy snow and, and traffic just takes it off and, and we don't need to respond to it. Um, wind plays a factor, uh, icy conditions, we, we run into that at times. Sometimes we're uh, not reactive on that, we'll be proactive where we put some material down if we know it's coming in. Um, but those are the challenges, um, you have to decide. You know, hindsight is always easy on those, but uh, um, that's what I'm looking at. Um, when it's time to plow, I, it's typically towards the end of the storm, being that we only have one crew. Um, so I call our staff in to start plowing. Um, then when they arrive at the shop, I give them instructions to the drivers, how we're going to handle this event, how we're going to sand it, um, what they can expect to see out on the road. <clears throat> and then once they get out on the roads, we're continuing to follow up on what the roads are looking at behind the plows. If we need to give them further instructions that maybe we need to put a little more material down, maybe we're going to stay out a little bit later today to slush some roads off. Um, I do, uh, we, we're kind of a <clears throat> unique county as far as school districts. Most counties have three or four school districts. Uh, we have a large amount of school districts, so I do text them uh, in the morning. They like to make their decision before 5, 5 a.m. if they're going to cancel or be two hours late. So I notify them what the road conditions are then, are there before then. And then also you guys get a text along with Deb and Steve. So when my boys are wondering, we can maybe say it's John's fault <laughs> would be good if they have to go to school and they would rather not. That's good to know. <laughs> I still leave it up to the superintendents okay. of the school oh, okay. district to okay. decide. They All might right. be hacking. They like now. a lot of assistance <laughs> at times. But. I won't let them near my plane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have 20 plow routes. Um, 11 are out of our Little Falls shop. 6 are out of our piers. And 3 out of our Randall shop. Um, average route is it take is approximately 45 miles, and each route takes six to eight hours to complete, and that's one time around. So there is some distance and, and coverage we got to cover each that, each time. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, John. Yep. That's one way or that both one ways? One way. One, one way. way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you got a two-lane highway. You you double that, and plus you add all the intersections in yep. and. And then dealing with some cars to maneuver around, uh, that time goes fast. So, 
Well, no, it takes six to eight hours to complete the entire route, which is one time. One time. Are you asking the miles? Both sides of the road. Yeah. There and back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that might seem like a lot, but what John is saying, uh, to clean up the intersections. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. You know, right turn question. lanes and mm -hmm. the speed that you go, mailboxes. all of those. Yes. And it's 45 miles, but yeah, like you said, yes. two sides of the road. So. Okay. Yep. Uh, here's a map of just, it's maybe a little hard to see, but we have our routes broken down. Um, obviously, the big dot in the middle is Little Falls, uh, and then the two satellite facilities, uh, Randall to the north, Piers there uh, to the east. They work out really well in those locations because those drivers report to those shops and uh, immediately they're on their routes and, and the plow is down not very far from the shops where they're located. Um, every uh, operator has the same route every time. We do not switch them out. That way they become familiar with their route. They know where the curbs are. They know where the railroad tracks are. They know where the trouble spots are, where the wind blows, where it doesn't. And, uh, and a lot of them take pride in their routes and have them cleaned up nice. Um, we have our routes set up so we're plowing our primary roads first, which are our roads that are most heavily traveled, and then uh, our secondary roads follow that. But we do have the routes set up so the plows are continuously following a route, um, so they're not lifting up and driving over here and that, so there is some order t to that. Um, sometimes we get a question, who plows what roads? We do not take care of all the roads in Morrison County. There are different jurisdictions. We take care of the, our system, which is our county state aid highway, numbers one through 104, and our county roads, numbers 200 through 285. MnDOT has a number of roads in our county, which is Highway 10, 115, 371, 25, 27, 28, 238. They are responsible for those roads. We do not plow them. Uh, we have a number of municipalities in our uh, county, 16 of them. They have their own street departments. They take care of their streets and avenues. Um, we do not take care of them. And then if you live on a township road, we have 30 townships in this county, and each township has their own equipment or they contract a, a private person to take care of the township. So we, we do get questions that people get confused and like, hey, why is this or that? It's just good to explain to residents that we don't plow all the roads, just the roads on our system. But we do plow in a city if it's a county road. Yes, correct. correct. Yep. Uh, sand and salt options. Uh, we have 100% salt. It works down to 15 degrees. Generally, we go with a 50-50 mixture. Um, that's what we use most of the time. Uh, we get good results with it. It's got good melting power, yet provides some grit down at the intersections. If we're in some situations where we need to get it off the road, we will heat up our loads, add a little bit more salt to it. How do you heat them up? Uh, we just add a little bit more salt. You said oh, about 50 50 mix, like you're about uh, 75. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. The box I, I heated. Know. We're trying to explain to people that ask those <laughs> yeah. kind of questions. Sorry. I wasn't clear. You just said it. Just put it in the microwave. <laughs> so you mix, mix all this salt and sand up at the shop? Yes, correct. Here in Little Falls or Emily? Uh, we do in both shots, but generally Little Falls. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then we haul it up to Randall. Okay. Mm hmm. I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do have another option. I purchased some clear lane. Uh, it's that green stuff there. And what that is, it's, it's treated with uh, magnesium chloride, so it works down to a, a colder temperature. When salt quits working, we do have that option um, to help melt roads if we need to. It's more expensive, mm -hmm. so that's one reason we don't run it totally. And secondly, when you get some of those lower temperatures, you're not want really, you know, really cold temperatures, you're not wanting to use that material at that level. Some of our trucks have uh, brine takes on them, so that's 24% salt. Um, acts as a wetting agent. <clears throat> it activates the salt, gets it working faster. It, it works better if you're running with 100% uh, salt. Um, what happens is it, it wets it, it keeps it to the center of the road. Traffic then doesn't carry it off. But generally, we're running a 50-50 mix, so it's not as critical for us. Is this the stuff you put down sometime <clears throat> before it snows? Pre-icing. Or is that something else that we're talking about? Min Mindata use a pre-icing uh, agent on the bridges, if that's what you're talking about, where they coat the roads. Uh, you, you could use that. We don't tend to do that with this, no. Okay. I've just seen when it was kind of going to rain. Yeah. And it was icy yep. where they 
put stuff down beforehand because yeah. the weather forecast was that. Yeah. We, we have done some pre-sanding, but it's our normal material. Yep, okay. Yep. Usually. Um, how do we treat the roads? Typically a normal sanding operation, we're always treating the hills, curves, and intersections. Um, sometimes center line treatment when roads are ice covered or compacted. That picture to the right is an example where the plow went through and, and the road was still pretty white and we knew we could melt it off so there's a center line and what happens it starts opening up the road and then our plow will come through later in that day and, and get the rest off and, and at least there's, uh, you know, as far as uh, residents that drive on those roads, one of their wheels is on blacktop so they have tractions. There are times where we don't treat and that's when temperatures are extremely cold or it's extremely windy out because then it goes against <coughs> you. So the next week? So this next week, this next five or six days, uh, not much will happen out on the roads due to our extreme cold temperatures. We're hoping we have them in good condition as we go through those oh, yeah. cold temperatures. Yep. Um, plowing with tandems, that's kind of the, the workhorse of our department. They do the, the main thing for snow and ice removal. So that's what we're using. Here I had an example of uh, there's times when the plow does not do its job and there's sometimes conditions are just right where the sooner you can figure that out in the storm and get your motor graders out on there scraping, this is the results you're going to get. And it's kind of a, uh, a great tool to have because it can perform miracles at times. It's night and day difference. And I know what other county that is with them. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't and, want and to hear. the picture on the right is where actually the plow went through both ways, and, and then obviously the motor grader made the one pass, and, and that's the difference. And by doing that, you're using a lot less chemical, you know. It doesn't take sand or salt. You scrape it off mechanically, and it's, it's done. So at times those are, and we have five of those. If I'm not mistaken, I think you explained one time the down pressure, the down pressure on the blades under the trucks do not, they don't work like a road grader. Am yep, I correct? Right. Yep, exactly. And I'll get to that in uh, okay. just a little okay. bit. Um, yep, exactly. Uh, here's just a picture of a, a tandem and a motor grader. Them are the two main pieces of equipment we utilize. Um, we have 21 tandems. We have 20 routes, so we have one for spare, which is nice. If we get a major breakdown, we, uh, we have one for backup. We have five motor graders, two front end loaders, one skid steer with a snow blower, one tractor with a three point snow blower. So when we get the, the snow blower on the skid steer would be for cleaning around bridges when we start to get a lot of snow. Um, if we start to get banks uh, at intersections, then we use the three point on the uh, tractor. So do you just trailer that to those points? Yes, over? correct. Yep, we do. Uh, a new tandem cost with. A, a, a new tandem with plow equipment costs two hundred thirty thousand, uh, so they're not cheap. But uh, you definitely need them to get the job done. Did that new truck that you bought last year, that one for eighty-five thousand that we got from that city, did that come with the blades and stuff, or did we, I think we added the pl front plow? We added the front plow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's but nice when you look for good deals when that's what they cost, and you find the ones to save money. Yeah. And we, we are. When the right situation comes around, you'll hear from us. Yep. Yep. Um, this is just a picture of the, the tandem on the left for 2005 and older trucks. We have 10 of them. Uh, they have the front mount wing without the underbody, so you see the wing on the side is mounted closer to the one-way plow. And then on the right, uh, we have 2006 and newer trucks, 11, so about half of them have the rear mounted wing and that's for the purpose of being right behind the underbelly that's underneath the truck. Uh, we have four trucks with uh, brine tanks. Um, where some people will get confused a little bit as far as residents, they think, well gee, the plow is not taking much of the snow off the road. There's no down pressure on our one-way plows. It's just the weight of the plow and they weigh about a ton. Um, as we go forward down to the next one, <clears throat> the one on the left is the typical one-way plow. Uh, that plow does not turn, it doesn't tip, and a couple years ago we tried these plows on the right, which uh, have a hydraulic ram that tilts the plow forward, and what we found out by having that is you're always changing your cutting edge angle, and you can take a little bit more of that snow off. And, and then also they're reversible, so they speed up uh, time at the intersections, and also if you change that angle a little bit, the reversible part of it, when you're plowing, it will take off a little more too. So there again, 
just by changing to that plow style uh, gets a little bit more of that snow off and then again it takes less chemical to, to melt the roads. Um, with these plows, yeah, people think there's down pressure but there isn't, otherwise if there was you wouldn't have no steer in the truck, so it's just obviously the weight of the plow. The other thing with these plows is uh, if you get going too fast, um, if you got a fairly large accumulation of snow, it creates some lift in that plow so drivers can't go too fast, but otherwise it's lifting that plow up and not cleaning that road is nice. Um, some cutting edge replacement. Uh, so we're changing our cutting edges about six to eight times on our one-way plows, and they cost $210 per set. How much do those weigh, those blades? Oh, about 50 pounds each. I would say there's two pieces to each one. Right, so they're not pieces. Yep. We have switched to some carbide, carbide blades. Um, they're a lot more expensive, but you only change them once a year, so it breaks out about even. What we do find out on these is there's a rubber insert on there, if you can see, and in those cabs, it's a lot quieter when we run this style. It's not as loud. Um, and cost is about the same because you're only changing that once a year, and the other ones you're changing six to eight times. So it's, it's kind of a wash as far as cost. Uh, cost of the product, but certainly more time spent changing the blades. Absolutely, yeah. Um, here's where Mike was talking about there are underbellies on our truck. They work really great when the temperatures are close to that freeze thaw point, um, they have five to 700 pounds of down pressure. And so they take more off than just the one way, and then sometimes they don't do the job and that's where the motor graders then step in. Are these on the tandem trucks, the under? Yeah, we have yeah. About, about 11 <coughs> trucks. Oh, I'm sorry. So all our new ones yes. going forward yeah. will have that too once we get the yeah. whole fleet out. Mm -hmm. A comparison on that under body scraper and then John will show the motor grader, the, the one way plow, that front plow, with the surface area that you that you have is only applying about 25 pounds per square inch on on that front plow these these are 500 pounds per square inch when they with down pressure uh, from the machine and what does a road grader do you're around 3,000 okay. pounds so you're quite a big jump and that's why you have more capability of scraping them I think people. I think people see a blade as a blade, mm -hmm. and it's all working the same. But each one of these are extremely different. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is just a picture inside the the cabs. The pictures on the left are in our older trucks, um, and then on the right are the newer controls. Uh, they're a lot more user friendly. Uh, the operator's arm doesn't get as sore pulling levers all day. Uh, here now they can rest, and it's just a little joystick. It's a lot more comfortable. <coughs> and then with that uh, computer screen in the corner we have, that has GPS technology. You can do a lot of things with that. Find out how much the operator's putting down on each road or total for the season. There's no end uh, if we want to dig that deep with it. So Funny, they've never asked me to sit in and fill in. <laughs> we were out there that one time and like, oh, these are complicated. There's a lot to it. It's yep. not that easy. This is just a typical sander. We have nine inch augers that we've upped the size years ago. They always had eight inch. Um, and then you'd have some tunneling going in the back where the sand wouldn't fall down. So they upsized the augers to nine inch. You're discharging about 15 pounds per revolution. So we're putting down, depending on what style of storm we have, 300 to 500 pounds per mile of 50-50 sand assault mix. So can you make it out on most routes that 45 miles yeah. and be able to sand yeah. without running out? If we're, yeah, absolutely. If we're just doing hills, curves, and intersections, they'll use about half of their load. Because it's nice to keep half of that load on there for weight. Mm -hmm. Now if we are center lining, they won't have a drop left when they come back. If you run into ice conditions, then you're probably double loading. Then, yeah. you're, then you take two loads. And the weight on the truck is important too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the later the truck gets, the more the truck can get pushed around? Absolutely. Yep. Do we have product at both of the remote locations? Piers and Randall? Or did all, it, of all, all, all of them. All of them, yep. So everyone can load right at their own shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here we were talking about the motor grader a little bit, just to re-emphasize this. is 3,000 pounds of down pressure on the blade, and they do perform miracles at times. Um, and the, 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 set, uh, the cutting edge on those are $245 per set. Uh, you can wear out a set very fast in the day when you're pushing down with that much down pressure. We usually have to send a mechanic out there to change them out on the road. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
because there's a lot of force there and it's grinding them away. You have to be careful that you don't dig the tar up. I mean, I know that sounds stupid probably, but... That, you know, on our system, that's really not an issue. It can be an issue. Okay. We, our pavements are thick enough. We have enough strength. We haven't, we haven't had an issue with pavement damage from scraping. Okay. And this website here is for the public to use. This is just uh, kind of to put it out there. If you are traveling anywhere in the state, you can jump on this website. It will show you if the roads are covered with snow or if they're not. It will show you where any accidents are. Uh, this MnDOT has uh, hundreds of cameras throughout the state, and plus any plow truck that's out, they have out, you can, you can view. So this is a site for everyone to use, not just for us, um, and it's a, it's a handy tool. Um, just in summary, I, I think we do provide a very high level of service to our county residents, how we handle our snow and ice control. Um, I definitely want to give recognition to our operators because I do wake them up early in the morning. They drive to work on unplowed roads and uh, they work in adverse weather conditions and they do a great job, absolutely 100%. Um, the other thing is uh, I'd like to thank Steve and also you, the county board, for supplying us with the resources to have good equipment to, to get the job, run, job done right. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So kind of that summary is uh, to do this job that John is tasked with, he has to have the, the right materials. He, we went through that. We need good equipment, which you folks have always been supportive of. We got quality operators. They're trained. They're experienced. They got pride in what they do. And uh, we got good managers. The nucleus of this that those operators did work around, John Shalanka, Bobby Sanders, and Randy Lundgren, we're very fortunate to have those folks on our team. And so they bring it all together and they make it work. I, I think that when you get calls, when I get calls from residents of other counties asking us to come and plow their roads, we're doing a good job. And that, that's happened. So um, thank you for your support. I echo what John has said there. And thank you and all your, your guys, John, for what they do. Absolutely. Thanks, John. I, I, did have, I did have a call a week or two ago. Somebody called and said, thank you for the great job you guys do. They've seen the plow go by twice already. And uh, they were really appreciative of that. So, Good to hear. Appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. I will yeah. send you guys this um, Good. presentation because I think it's helpful. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a few other items, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for your consideration. Uh, the first is the Piers Project Support Resolution that was in your packet. Um, this time of the year, uh, solicitations are taking place for a transportation alternative program, which helps support safe routes to schools and other trail uh, projects within um, the Region 5 area. The City of Piers has um, requested that we would support their application for these funds because they are a city of less than 5,000 population and do not have the ability to handle federal funds. <coughs> MnDOT requires that they have a sponsor in order for them to apply. And, um, and that is normally the county that provides that. And we've done this previously for the city of Piers. They were successful actually in an application last year that we will tie to a project that we will do uh, in 2021, I believe, is when that one is scheduled. And this would probably be 2022. Um, and so our request is that the board would agree to sponsor this application. And then to follow this is an agreement that we have with the city of Piers that they will cover the costs associated with anything that we would do other than uh, minimal administration of the project. Uh, if there are, are uh, the, the, the local match, if there is some other future costs that come up, that agreement would cover that. That'll be a cost to the city of Piers. But the first initial request is that you would adopt a resolution that you would sponsor their application. Can I get a motion on that? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Wincher, seconded by? Second. Commissioner Lemire, is there any further discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Then the next is the sponsorship agreement between the city of Piers and Morrison County that lays out that the costs associated uh, with this, if it's successful, would be 
um, bore by the city of Pierce other than the, the de minimis essentially administrative costs that we would as a county uh, bear in support of their application. So moved. We've got a motion by Commissioner Second. Jones. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wincher. Any further discussion? None. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have the updated version of the solid waste license applications for today. Let you peruse that just a, a little bit. Um, the one in the packet is not. This is updated. Oh, this this updated. is updated. There's a, there's a little bit of a change to it. Um, we have 16 solid waste haulers that have made application. They've all made application. There are. A, I'm just grab one more. Sorry. Okay. There are a couple that have not not yet made payment for uh, through the application that they have all provided uh, fax copies that the checks that cut will either get it in the mail some may deliver that by the end of today the they've provided all of the ordinance requirements in terms of their vehicle inspections their insurance and they have properly provided the documents that we require for them to be a licensed hauler um, the recyclable uh, haulers also have met those requirements. The facility uh, licenses on the second page have all been inspected by Chuck. They've met the requirements of the ordinance, so all of them. We would be recommending that the board would adopt and approve their facility licenses. So the only uh, contingency we would be asking for are those that we have not received the check for yet. They would approve the license, and once the check is comes in, that will that will be the final issue that is resolved, so that they become the licensed hauler. So we would ask that you would adopt and uh, authorize these licenses that are listed on this. Can I get a motion on that? Awesome. Get a motion by Commissioner Lemire, Second. seconded by Commissioner Jelinski. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chair, Steve, similar to any of the other stuff that we've talked about today. What happens if one of these people, um, if it's January 1st, they haven't paid, and then it's January 15th and they haven't paid, and then it's January 31st and they haven't paid? Um, the landfill is closed on January 1st, so on January 2nd, um, if they're collecting in our county, they'd be in violation of the ordinance. Yep. Uh, one of the things that immediately happens is the delivery to the landfill. We would, <coughs> they would go to the unlicensed hauler tip fee. Um, so there's a somewhat of a penalty right there, and then we would be dealing with Brian on okay. uh, how we would uh, handle them as an unlicensed hauler collecting in our county okay. and violating our ordinance. We're lucky good. we don't have that. No, but I, the question I think deserves to oh, be no, asked. No, just, yes. We just haven't like had a any of our common areas. issue, yeah. so that's good. Very good. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Also included in your packet was an agreement between Morrison County and Buckman Township for a jurisdictional change that we would propose takes place on 250th Avenue. It is a small, say, a half mile segment that connects uh, our county State Aid Highway 26 into Benton County, their county uh, State Aid Highway 78. That half mile currently is under Buckman Township's jurisdiction. It carries very, relatively very high traffic for a township road. It currently is a, is a, a bituminous surface roadway, which Benton County intends to reconstruct in their county. As a part of that, Benton County had uh, co made contact to the department to see whether th we would uh, consider trying to work an arrangement with Buckman Township to have county jurisdiction for the entire length of the roadway. Um, in view of, of the traffic volumes and the, co the connection, the con connectivity of that road segment, I believe that it is the right thing for it to be under a county jurisdiction. We met with Buckman Township 
and, and discuss that with them so that uh, when we requested that they have some skin in the game here so that if this happens, uh, they are participants in it. They have agreed that they would participate up to $75,000 in the reconstruction of that half a mile segment and they would acquire the right of way for the reconstruction project. So we are proposing to the board today that we'd enter into this agreement with Buckman Township to accomplish this. Could I get a motion for that? So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Wincher, seconded by Second. Commissioner Lemire. Any further discussion? By me, Mr. Chair, we discussed this here yep. before, and uh, yes, it, Steve is right that this is something that I, I'm firmly for, is that the county should take this, but like he also mentioned, Buckman is going to have some skin in the game too before this proceeds. And I would say 90% of the people already think it's a county road. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I was surprised when I found out it was a township road. So, typical traffic volumes on township roads, I would say, are probably in the 40 to 80 vehicles per day. This is over 500 vehicles per day oh, on wow. this half mile yeah. segment. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then the last action, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, is a request to support a 2022 federal transportation project submittal for Fourth Street here in the city of Little Falls. That is our County Road 257. <coughs> um, this was a road exchange that happened a number of years ago um, in which we took over uh, the the city portion of 4th Street and it tied into our County Road 257 which provides access to the more Little Falls Morrison County Airport we currently have a project uh, moving forward in our five-year plan that will connect 138th uh, out to 160th Avenue 138th Street out to 160th Avenue which is an extension essentially of 257 uh, to that 160th Avenue. So we provide a, a very good loop in the southeast portion of the city of Little Falls that provides access to uh, the hospital, the St. Otto's Care Center, the um, courtyard, uh, or courtyard uh, apartments, St. Mary's Church. It, it's, it's, it, it has a lot of uh, facilities that collect on this segment of roadway. So I believe that it, it is a very good road to propose for a project because it will rate high, I believe. The city of Little Falls has some underground utility work need required. This, the sanitary system is deteriorated and will need to be replaced at some point in time. We would do this in conjunction of this when we're successful of, of uh, obtaining the, the funding. And so that's, uh, that's what our goal is, to try to build this as a part of our whole transportation plan. And we request that the board would uh, authorize this resolution as support for us to make this application. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Mo motion by Commissioner Second. Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Lemire. Is there any further discussion? We've talked about this road for a long time uh, at our meetings and planning sessions and stuff. So this this is a good well this is a good project and uh, it's a it's about a million and a half dollars and so if we're successful it'll be a, a nice uh, outside resources to help our support of our transportation system. Absolutely. Okay, okay we have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and that's all I have. So I wish you a very happy new year. Thank you, Steve. Happy new year. See you in 2018. Thank you for the great Thanks, job Steve. you've done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, we will have the administrator's report. Go ahead and take a few minute break. Yes, you may. We'll take a five minute break before we get into our next. Thought. Well, let's uh, administrative report. Deb. All right, we have a number of different things. Um, first, we're going to start with uh, the government center remodel and what's happening with that. Um, we have information that went out in the packet about the bids that came back, and Contegrity's been working the last couple of weeks, a few weeks, uh, making sure they're vetted and properly uh, qualified. Is that the right word? That would be a, yep. All right, I'm learning a lot through this process here. Yep. Um, but first, the um, item that we have 
in your packet, the first item that we have in your packet is the adoption of the um, resolution for the Johnson Control component. And maybe Pete and John can talk a little bit more about why this is separate from the rest of it. Sure. Uh, as you know, uh, that was the one package that we did not put out for uh, bids. You currently have a, a system in place in your entire campus, Johnson Control, uh, control System, head end, uh, endpoint controls, et cetera, throughout. So in order to potentially put that out or put it out as a competitive bid, those components and the areas we're not reworking would all have to come out. Uh, to stay consistent with uh, the existing system. At the same time, you currently have a service agreement in place with Johnson Controls for the quarterly or semi-annual or whatever the setup for the maintenance side of it. Uh, we have worked with other counties before where it is applied as an extension of an existing system. We work with the control contractor or vendor, what it may be, uh, fill out a form, uh, send it through if it meets the uh, litmus side of it, good to go with it. So, John, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to add to that. Or? No, that pretty much covers it. So essentially, if somebody other than Johnson Control would bid this, we'd have to redo the entire government center. We're not intending to spend that money and do that because we don't have to. So in order to keep the same system that we have, not spend the extra dollars in areas that we aren't remodeling, uh, the idea is we, we stick with our current vendor in that regard. Mr. Chair, John, Pete, I've been here for a long time. I've seen Johnson Controls vehicles here for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's an operation. They're here. So I'm just going to put it right back to you, John. If you, I believe this for the record, if you didn't believe in this company, we probably wouldn't be having this exact discussion. Cool. And, and I got, you're, you're the maintenance guy, so yeah. are you in full support of Johnson Controls? Yeah. Otherwise, that's, we wouldn't be here. We'd that, have something that's, else. I just kind of wanted to hear that because I, I believe wholeheartedly believe that also. Yes. And, Mr. Chair, the resolution that we have here is because of that those bidding requirements that we have as government entity when we do work we need to follow certain rules um, and laws when it comes to making sure that we, we do that in a legal way. And so this we're deviating from that, but there's a reason we're deviating from that and the law is set up in a way that we have to prove that. Yep. And Brian's worked with, with us on this to make sure that we're set up and have the proper documentation that, that says here's the reason why we didn't follow what we did. Okay, could I get a motion on this? I'll move. Okay, second. I got a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Lemire. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor, no, see. Oh, yep, roll call. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Lemire. Aye. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. And I. Motion carries. All right, I will sign that and we'll continue to work with Johnson Controls on that. Um, the next. I was not in the right place. That's my problem. Doing too many things at once here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> safe. All right. The next is the Enviro Safe Incorporated discussion with the design of the hazardous material bid or process, or I'll let you go for it. Yep. Um, as you know, uh, architecturally, Better Johnson can't touch hazardous waste license and stuff. It's a special uh, <coughs> vendor or special license that requires to come in and do the assessment. Uh, once we had the overall scope of the project, we worked with John and uh, found a guy out of St. Cloud uh, that could do the assessment. So he's been up here over the past three, four weeks uh, doing various tests just to check to see what we had in these buildings. Uh, I think right now uh, what it's limited to, and John correct me if I'm wrong, you know, we have some lead that uh, was put in at one point above this uh, walls on the 70s portion, along with some mastic there. There's a few fittings here and there of the mechanical pipe fittings. Uh, the big thing is when you get over to the 60s building, the mastic in the floor. Um, there's a few other spots that he had put in his report. The 90s portion of the project is fairly clean. Uh, so what needs to happen is if somebody needs to put together the documents to actually get that portion out for bid. Uh, and conduct the air testing and basically see this thing through. So uh, my brother Mike had them break apart what that part was, and right now for $4,300, he'd put the design together and get this to a point where we at least got the bids to make that part, part happen. So. And in the documents that I included, 
with your board packet, it shows what this company is estimating that ultimate cost to be, but right now we're just talking about the design documents to put yeah. together the bid, which then will solidify what the cost is. But in order for us to run budget numbers and to look at it and make sure we're, we're everything's in line, we, you know, this gives us at least some idea on what he's thinking. So it's 4300 for that specific design work to get the bids out to do the hazardous mitigation. And it's not to remove it, just to design. Just to design it to get the bids out to get do the bids. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Okay. So I, I will ask you ask this of Pete. Yep. And I'm not asking you to be a crystal ball. I, I know all the answers. That's not what I'm asking. But the 60s building, the 70s building, and the 90s building, when the day is done, a year from now, two years from now, are we going to be asbestos free? No. Uh, it, you could be. The one spot that we really aren't doing much work in is the second floor of the 60s building. If you wanted to get rid of that, we'd have to potentially then add that to the scope of work. So, um, from the standpoint of the 90s building and the 70s building, yes. It's just that it's still over in the 60s. Oh, the second floor. And that's just life. That's just the way things were constructed when they were constructed. Nothing wrong with it. No. But if you're going to start constructing, then there is. And that's law. Exactly. Correct. It's just protection for everybody, and that's just the, the lay of the land for right Very now. Good. <laughs> okay. Could I get a motion? <coughs> yeah, it's a real Awesome, Mr. Chair. I got a motion by, by Commissioner Second. Lemire. Seconded by Commissioner Wincher. Any other discussion? The only question I have is, is this on our, our bid already where it says by owner? It's $200,000. Yes. Is that an estimate? So this figure here has this stuff figured in already. Exactly. We had, uh, if you remember back before this assessment was done in those earlier estimates, we had just a placeholder of $100,000. Knowing where this is at, we threw a budget of 200000 to encompass that work. Okay. Um, just so you had an overall picture. It wasn't that, okay, we have 100 and all of a sudden then these bids yeah. come in like it's, they're talking so maybe 130 to 150 of the contingency on it. Then, uh, okay. So Sounds that's right. where that's at. Okay. Uh, this is a roll call vote. <coughs> Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Commissioner Lemire. Aye. And aye. More to come on that when the process moves forward. Um, and then the next RBA is. Uh, uh, we've talked about this before. We've had other projects where there are things that come up where change orders come up because there are uh, and remodeling, especially things that are found as you go through and start tearing apart a building, things of that nature. Um, as we talked about a reasonable level to set that at, we came up with the proposed 15000 for me to be able to approve so things can continue. Um, you guys will be getting regular updates of the project and where it's at. Um, you will be getting um, all change orders that would come in excess of $15,000. We'll let you know what's going on um, in terms of things that come up and, and costs that are added, but are recommending that, that I'm able to approve change orders up to 15 to keep things rolling as we get into the... the um, oh, if I, I may, Mr. Chair, Chair Deb, what's going to uh, give your expertise that we need a change order? The gentlemen that are sitting here. That's what I rely on. Typically, what I good up. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it's not what I've got for my arsenal. Typically, we'll be here once a month. Whether it's myself or my brother Mike, can give you an update, overall budget, things of that nature. When he, he means in front of the board, he'll be here a lot more than that. <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly. But uh, at the same token, uh, if there is a change that's coming that's documented that potentially could exceed that. There would be a, what's called a PR issued by Steve Johnson, Vetter Johnson Architects, called a proposal request. So at that point in time, you'd probably even have the month before knowing that this proposal request is out for pricing. The pricing might come through and if it's something that's 16000 at least it gets Deb the authority to say we're going to move with this thing so we can at least get things on order instead of waiting till the next month's board meeting. It just keeps the flow moving. I'm okay with that and I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by... I'll yeah, second yeah. it. I'll I'll second it. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, roll call. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Commissioner Lemire. Aye. Aye. And Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Next is the approval of the low qualified bidders, and Pete can run through the documents that he put out. 
Yeah, I just handed the two documents out. One is the overall bid tab for the project. Uh, like I said, we opened those uh, December 6th. Uh, we received 69 bids in 18 different categories. Um, I don't know if you had seen this before or not, but uh, I thought the turnout was uh, very well attended. We had multiple bidders in uh, a lot of the categories, so they knew we had good competition. Uh, I think we were once again rewarded with good business with the timing of, of the project. Uh, contractors are looking this time of year for work and they know it's somewhat of a fast start. They're not waiting till next spring for footings and foundations and things of that nature uh, to come about. Uh, so what we did was identified all the low bidders. Uh, we talked before too, my brother Mike spent uh, the last two and a half weeks on the phone going through uh, with each contractor in detail, uh, the work scope, make sure that uh, for the most part the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed uh, and have assembled the overall budget. So before I jump into the budget, I just want to check and see if there's any questions on the bid tab in general. If I may, Mr. Chair, Pete, when you open, let's say, for the plumbing or whatever, and you had three or four bids, did you take the low bid all the time, or did you do some betting and say, you know what, this company is not what I thought it would be, so therefore we took this second highest bid? Uh, according to the state statute, we need to offer this, or the county is obligated to offer this to the lowest responsive bidder. And uh, as long as they got, can provide the proper insurance and bond, don't have a terrible track record without a basis to go off of, and being that they're qualified and they're comfortable with their number, there isn't a whole lot we can do at that point. So. I don't think there's anybody on the list that you disqualified, though, that was low, correct? No. No. So everybody in this particular Good. response was the low price. Mr. Chair, Pete, you've been in this business for a long time. That's not making you an old man, but for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All of the people that here that, that did, that came across with a bid, be it for what it might have been, have you worked with these folks for the uh, vast majority at the very least? A, a vast majority we have. Um, for instance, uh, Holden Electric, yep. uh, Premier Test and Balance, McDowell Company, uh, Gustafson Mechanical, we did have a few projects with them. Uh, Breath Zenzen, we worked with them for years. Uh, the painting contractor, this Gunion out of St. Cloud, this will be the first time with them. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a new name. Kendall Dorn Hardware, yes. Uh, so in... In the big scope of the picture, you, are you yourself, being in the business that you're in, are you comfortable with what you're seeing also here? Yeah, I think for the most part, uh, like I said, undertaking-wise, uh, with the, the names we have, the one thing, like I said, we set up a process, too, and as long as we can continue to hold our, their feet in the fire. And the What's same, that At the same token, we understand construction and... What it is, is our goal now is to try to get these people in as efficient as possible so when we give them an opportunity or a window opportunity to come in and do their work. So we're not dragging them up here to put two P-traps on them, by the way, we'll see yep. them next week. You know, that's not doing them any due diligence, it's not doing us any due diligence. So let's get some things ready, get some work in front of them, get them in here as efficiently as possible, it works out well for everybody. Yeah, we're going to have issues with one before this set day's done? Absolutely. There's no question about it. It's done the job yet where one folder doesn't get a little thicker than the rest, but we seem to get through it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, we have some sewer pipes that we have to do that was not part of this project. Correct. Which will be part of this project now because we're in it. So my question is, do we get a bid from them now for that there, or is that an add-on item where... It'll be a change order. It will be a change order. Yep. So if, if it comes in under that $15,000, we will just bring it to death and say this is where we're at. And I guess I was wondering, you know, if we know we're going to do that. Of course, you've already opened the bids. Um, okay, I understand. Yep. So if something comes in that it's more, this is my layman's understanding of this, this is how it was explained, that if it comes in and it's more significant in cost or it's more significant in, code, in scope, we need to then do that PR process, which is kind of rebid it in a way, and contact everybody and say this is what we want to do. We have taken where we've had change orders that have come in drastically high. We know that the price is out of the way out of a line. And then we've got two two choices. We can either issue a change in construction, what's called a construction change directive, uh, that basically forces a contractor to do something for a set price. That's not always the best way of doing it because it becomes very adversarial in a hurry, and then you argue it out uh, later in down the line based on the general conditions of the contract. 
other than that, a lot of times we'll go out and get a second price from someplace else. Because if we're replacing pipe on this bid for ten dollars a foot, and now all of a sudden he wants thirty bucks a foot, that's probably an issue. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. If I may, Mr. Chair, going back to these change orders, um, you know, X contractor put in a bid at such and such. What determines that that's going to be you? They're going to say, you know what, this here needs this now because we forgot to do that. But yet they have the uh, blueprints in front of them, do you give in right away and say, oh, okay, a mistake is a mistake, or do they have to eat that one? I always, I always go with the adage, I, I really don't care what, and once this contract is signed, I don't care what you, what you bid, I really care what you contracted for. And what you contracted for was the information that's in those plans and specifications, okay. which is referred to as the contract documents. And uh, if it's in the contract documents, you know, we feed off the engineers and the architect for opinions all the time. Is this clearly stated in here? Yes. If it isn't, then they'll issue what's called okay. a proposal request. Um, sometimes you get into the gray areas and door hardware and things of that nature. Well, the closer was supposed to be a 4041, and you know what? We actually need a 4042, so, but the feature on it is $37 more. <coughs> Some of those things just come down the line, but the bigger issues, like I said, if it is such, uh, if it's in the contract documents, it's in the contract documents. Good information. Thank you. So it's how good you did your job to the, at the very start of this thing and how it turns out at the very end. Yeah. And that it's, puts a little pressure on you. In it does. It's, it gets to be stressful at times because, like I said, you get a lot of guys that, uh, yeah, could you take the high bidders all the way through these projects and a uh, private job and have more cush built yeah. into it? And Yeah, but that's not that's doing what anybody That's you have a contingency is. fund, too, I hope. That might yeah. take care of some of that, Joe, because we know you're not perfect either. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm it's kind of thinking we're doing all of this. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping you are. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of believe that when you're opening these bids and there's a lot of difference between the first and the second guy, that's probably where you're going through all these documents to make sure that I did not forget something when I gave you my bid to have that problem later. Exactly. Right. Yep. Okay. Sounds cool. good. All right. Um, what are we voting on here now? Um, are we the, doing the, oh, then we'll the, jump over to the budget if there's no other questions on the well, bid we tab. Didn't, we didn't no, we approve that yet. Do we want to approve it with the budget? Or we what? can, but I just wanted to go through oh, just, to, okay. uh, just to kind of lay out. So basically that budget, we took the low qualified contractors, put them in <laughs> the order of the categories that were bid. Uh, you can see below that we still have the contingency line item. We have the general conditions. We have the CM fee, we have the building permit uh, plan review fee, which the plumbing plan review and the building permit will come out of. You got the architect's fees, and then down below that, we have the temp control. We still have the line item in there for the FF&E, the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, the asbestos. And even though we, the parking lot's already been taken care of, we still know that we got a few sidewalks and stuff, but my understanding is I think the parking lot's out of a different funding source potentially, so. Yep. Funding for the parking lot's already been, it's already been expensed, but we just kind of wanted to still give you an idea of the total cost of the project because yep. that was part of it. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, if you compare back to the last estimate we presented to you last, uh, well, I shouldn't say last year, it was in 17, uh, right now we're $2,459,834 under that estimate. So, uh, a little breathing space. I'm going to have another question. I think I brought this to you before too, Pete, if I may, Mr. Chair. The architect fees. If the architect messed up, is there somewhere in that contract where they we can't really hold them to something? If they forgot to put a pillar here, oh shoot! Now it's going to cost another two hundred thousand. What happens there? You know, we carry a contingency for that reason. If it is something where you've got major, major disasters, they carry a professional liability policy. Okay. Um, at the same time, too. You can go to a fast food restaurant and order two hamburgers, and how many times has that order not been correct when they serve five billion a year? It's going to happen in a construction right. project. They haven't pulled every ceiling tile out of this building right. to see where it's at, and things are going to come up. And that's my and point, that's, Mr. Chair, is that when you do a remodel, I don't know if we all done it, you're going to come across things because, like you said, you don't pull every tile down, and sometimes you know, again, it's human error there, and that's what we have this for now. And I. I understand that because, again, we did a remodel, and it's like, where did this come from? Well, if you'd have torn the wall down, you'd have seen it. You yep. know, well, so. 
And you're going to have things too. User groups are going to start to see the floor start to develop itself. You know, they've right. looked at enough drawings and people have a hard time sometimes looking at a piece of paper and mm -hmm. people are going to say, you know what, if this wall was over here, I think we could be served public better. And those are the things you look mm -hmm. at as well as you're going through this process. Our contingencies in our first bid, went to that? wasn't that about a million bucks? Well, what we had the first time around uh, in there, we had, uh, yes, on the, on the SD before when this project, we had... Uh, 489 in for a construction contingency and a design and bid contingency. And then when we brought a DD estimate to you, we had dropped the design and bid contingency down to half as it was at 248. And so now I took that design and bid contingency off because, you know, we, we got the numbers. So okay. we're riding with basically what we call a construction contingency. Okay, gotcha. And that's what you had planned for, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yep. At the very beginning, that's really what you planned for. Con at the end of the day, the construction contingency. Exactly. It just gets narrow and narrower the yeah. more we've yeah, got breaks, it. Yeah, it breaks it down. Okay. I really all don't right. understand it all, but I'm learning. Well, <laughs> like you, you've, already, you've already completed this work. We know what the bill is. Yes. Yeah. So we don't need no contingency yes. on that. Exactly. Yep. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm a little Does bit lost Does the contingency here. Do I need have a contingency? Yeah. I'm no, you do, do not. No. I do not have a motion on this piece yet. Or not right? that I wrote that. So okay. Then can I get a motion on uh, the bid documents? I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. I'll second it for more discussion. You got a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Wincher. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe Deb can help this here one, and this maybe we're jump, jumping the gun. This extra 2.4, where is that going to go? If, let's say, everything comes in perfect the way it is, well, what happens We are that? a long way from knowing that. I so understand. We are not, we are not at... Yeah, at this time, I don't have recommendations. I don't have a plan. I don't have, we have a long way to go in the next couple of years to find out what this project, where it's at. And we have that time period to make sure that we're still sitting at the end in two years at that 2.4, and then we're going to be talking about a plan moving forward. But I haven't made, I haven't put effort into developing recommendations for you at this point in time. We have a number of different things that are probably going to be explored, whether or not it's, you know, you, you pay down things early. There are a number of things that we haven't touched that may need some work. Um, there are different ideas on the outset of planning for other areas that we know exist. I know we have, we've talked about it before, the historic courthouse has windows that are not good, that need to be replaced. We know we have other um, projects in line down, you know, planning. I don't know, so I don't know what we're going to do or how that is going to work or what the final project costs are going to be. So we want to make sure we get through that before we can even come to have a discussion about what would be reasonable. Does that answer your question? I don't know. How's that? More <laughs> summarized version. The answer is that, I don't know. It did, yeah, it well, did. the answer would probably be we're not going to waste it. Well, that, mm -hmm. that's my I mean, point. And that's I mean, a very good I point. I mean, it's yeah. going to be, yeah. it's either going to be paid back on the note that we had or on yeah. other things yeah. that need to be done. Yeah, exactly. The money's not going to be wasted, no. and uh, I feel like we did this the right way that we did this. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so, definitely not going to waste it. No. Well, but I think that's kind of... You know, what are we going to do with it? If there's money left and everything's fixed, we're going to put it back on the note, I would think. Yeah. You know, and so... If there's money left and more things that need to be fixed, well, then we can talk about whether that makes sense at that time. Then we'll have to approve those one at a time and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So mm -hmm. does that kind of answer your question? I just threw it out there because I'm sure it's going to be asked, where, <laughs> where is that money going to go? We're not going to waste it. <laughs> no, I, I don't know yet. Um, but... We'll talk about it as this. Okay, time. we have a motion a second. Any further discussion? If not, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Commissioner Lemire. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I have a happy new year. You too. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, happy now, new year. Another question. We're going to start January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 5th. Well, I'm glad you asked that because we're going to attack a few things on a few different fronts. As you know, the first order of business is we're going to get a hold of this asbestos guy here this afternoon and get him going on these documents so we can get that part started. At the same time, too, my brother Mike and John have been working on a temporary plan down in the basement. We'll start working on that. We've got to get some doors cut in, some ductwork redone, some electrical. Uh, they'll be starting to cut a few holes in. We've got to get a new pathway across here for some data lines to keep you guys still in business. And then... Uh, start the process. We'll put a pre-construction meeting together with all these contractors. Basically, it's just a meeting to give them the rules of the game and uh, get started. I know the building permit's ready to be picked up. We need to get a check over to the city hall for that. Um, 
So we're going to attack it on a few fronts here. So it'll probably be so, more like the end of January before okay, that's really right. a lot of activity, but we'll start to see that in the move process start. Because you'll, you'll, you'll fix up the room that everybody's going to, whichever way that is. Then you'll start getting all this stuff out of here and putting that up for auction, whatever you're going to auction off. And then you'll start tearing down this center part and redoing that. When that's done, people will move back into here. Then you'll start on the next section, correct? Exactly. We're scheduled right now. Veteran service will be moving next week. The third. Um, and they will be going down into that first floor of public health. There's some vacated offices there. And then the week following, IT is going to move down into, hopefully, if that's ready, down into that way back storage section um, at the way eastern, northeastern corner of that uh, big area, open area, where we have storage down there. Um, where we had storage. Where we had storage <laughs> down there. Uh, and then, and that, that's what Mike's talking about. There's some rough and things with some light fixtures and some, a door that needs to go back and forth with code and then hallways, and I don't understand all that, but that's that needs to be done. And then they'll be done so they can help when we move that following week, the week of the 15th. We're closed on the 15th. That's a, as a President's Day, it's one of January. Luther Martin Luther King Day, sorry. Um, so I'm going to have staff, we're going to move a lot of Amy's office for land services, hopefully on that Friday. And then we're going to have staff come in for sure that Monday, maybe some on that Sunday to move some of the, the counters and everything from up here. Um, so that way we don't interrupt business as much as, as could be interrupted if we did it all during the, the open work days. So and that's our plan for now. Um, and then we'll be starting. Okay. And if I may, Mr. Chair, John, Pete uh, probably won't. But again, to determine, we just brought up the auction stuff. We have a website. I'm assuming that'll be on there. Yeah. Um, and people will, I don't know if they're going to be contacting you, or what are you going to do with that there? I, I, you too, that's what we're here. Yeah. You can determine whether it's salvageable or not. Yeah. You know, I'm, yep. There's, yep, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, there's so pretty much one. anything. We have stuff on that auction all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 there are. It's, whether it's a, yeah. <laughs> whether it's a chair or whether it's a file cabinet, yep. whatever it might be. But I just don't want people time. digging through if we have a dumpster out there. Oh, no, that's, yeah. No. Yeah, no. That's not how that works. We're going to be closing off that west parking lot as a reminder to um, to be able to have contractors when they're here park there as much as possible um, and any equipment that they need and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're starting. And as you know, Tuesday we'll be at the City of Little Falls because this room is part of the initial demo and construction phase. And I just want to thank Pete for all the yeah, work, too. I really appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. And I'm sure there's more work for you to come with. <laughs> well, it's just beginning. There's no question about it. But, you know, there's been good people we've worked with here so far. And Debs have been a, done a tremendous job of letting everybody, uh, the information out, keep everybody informed. But, yeah, hands off to John and everybody here at the county. So it's been a good process so far. Thank we'll you. Continue. It's a lot easier to come to a meeting when you're two and a half million under, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> than, than well, <laughs> Exactly, it's a good position to be in. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, but you planned that out too. I remember because we said let's do our bids in October when work is done exactly. and before work starts, and it gives people winter work and people like Pete said, they don't have foundations to wait yep, for. That's so exactly I mean, right. it, it was planned out too to try to to try to take advantage of this, and I think that happened. Well. I ran the numbers this morning real quick, and just uh, if you took the high out and the low out, you know, like I said, that gap closes in real quick. And just even if we cross the board right now, if you've taken all the high bids across the board, we have been about 9000 within our budget. So, like I said, it's uh, we were pretty fortunate to get the aggressiveness we had. Yeah, good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Appreciate thank you. it, Commissioners. Yeah, happy New Year, guys. You too. Happy New Year. Have a good day. Okay, we're still into administrator's yes, report. Yes, I have one more action item, then a couple other updates. The, this is to approve Cody Smoody of District 2 to the Board of Adjustment Committee. I'll, I'll move on that, Mr. Chair. A motion by Commissioner Second. Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Lemire. Is there any further discussion? If none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Um, um, as I mentioned, I just want to provide a couple updates. As I mentioned, Tuesday we'll be at... City Hall to um, start that this process over there. It'll be, you know, it's kind of strange thinking of what we all have to bring over there, but I'm sure it'll feel like um, second nature after a couple of months. So we'll do that um, after following the board meeting. If I could ask that you just kind of help me organize what it is you want to make sure you see over there that I'm not thinking of if there's something you guys need. Um, 
I mentioned the moving schedule. I was going to update you on that and what's happening with that. And so that's going to move forward. In they January. have a projector over there too, don't they? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that will be all. It should hook up the same and everything. They have Wi-Fi for you guys to access. We have all of that. We'll go through that on Tuesday. Um, or I'll provide you a document maybe. Well, I'll probably just go through it on Tuesday. Um, probably some a little early then? Maybe if you want to get... I mean, not, I can not early, but yeah. Early. I'll be there early. You can be there about three minutes. I'm staying overnight. <laughs> I, can, I can be there ten minutes early today. We'll just, yeah, we'll get you hooked up. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. I had a I have an email here from Melissa Sanoski. Yeah. Uh, conflict of interest yeah. that needs yes. to be done by. Is that something you were going to talk about? Or I wasn't, we, but it should be downstairs. I'll have her stop it, and we'll get that for you if we it's do not that every year. Right, yeah. but they need to be done by January fifth. So I'm just saying, if we need to stop downstairs and sign them. Finished. Huh? One good years already. Is it in your box? Did you print them out and put them in your box? No, I took oh. care of it before I got Okay, you I should have her printed out. Because I can't stand stuff like that waiting for Okay, it. I just wanted to make sure we didn't forget about that. I have to get it done. I'll make sure she has it printed out. She probably didn't think of that. Our office is a little shorthanded, so I apologize with the lack of uh, timeliness if there's anything you guys have been waiting on. Um, but, yeah, if you have a chance, Beth has been unbelievable. Well, maybe don't talk to her today because... <laughs> She's working on payroll here, but we're um, we're getting things done and we'll make it work. But it's been quite a week of lots of learning here, so okay. um, we're getting that done. The what else was I going to say? Is there any other question? Oh, schedules. That's what it was. We're not going to do schedules today. Next Tuesday, I'm going to need them though through the 22nd of January, so almost the whole month, because there are two weeks where we don't have meetings. So if you want to come prepared with that, it would be appreciated. Um, and then I just need to take a minute to thank Commissioner Wilson for his service as board chair in 2017. Oh my goodness, yes. We've had a lot going on in 2017. We've had um, major changes. You know, obviously we're sitting with, with different faces here. We've had some sadness, but I think we've come through that um, as best as we can. And so it's been um, quite the year, really, when you think of everything that we've done. And it's only going to really start a new chapter come 2018 and there'll be a lot more changes that'll happen. We'll get new faces again. We'll we'll be in different places and we'll be readjusting how we look. And so redefining that is, is something that takes a lot to lead through. So I appreciate you guys and what you've done the last year um, under your direction. I appreciate what is to come with that because sticking together when there's lots of changes is important. So I think we do that well here in Morrison County. It's something I know I'm proud of. Um, and enjoy coming to work every day because of it. So thanks for your support. Thanks for your work, um, for tolerating us. <laughs> I tell you, it's been an honor to do we'll this. Forward. It's, uh, it's fun working with a good board. You know, we tease each other once in a while, but really I know we all care about the public and we care about doing things right. And um, it's been a real pleasure. I know we've gone through a lot of things, but nothing seems to be hard. It just stuff we have to deal with and we continue to deal with it and uh, make it work and it's been a pleasure working with all of you good job mr good chair good job yes good job. Right. So I have a certificate here. thank you very much um and maybe right after the meeting we'll take a little photo and, and move forward with that but and again i'm going to throw mr commissioner jelinski under the bus he said about two Thank weeks you. ago that we should have a photo because this is our last time being in this. Won't be under the bus because I'm prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Um, I just wanted to scare we're you. We're going to get bit. the flag over here too and make it official. We'll we'll conclude with a nice nice okay. picture and we'll get that and um, anything else from our office or from me that you guys need or that I might be missing because it's. And all busy. I want to say too again. You did a great job, Mr. Chair, but also to our county yes. administrator. That's right. You did a good job for this year, so we look forward for to this year. You will only hear that today. So <laughs> you're as no. good as you are. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank no you. We all like appreciate it. Happy New Year to everyone. Yes. We appreciate the press too, Tyler. And, um, yep. You too. Thank you yeah, very you much. Too. Oh, thank you. oh, that's right, oh, Brian. Oh, I'm Brian. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leave you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. We got a motion by Commissioner Jelinski, seconded by Commissioner Lemire. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Motion carries. All right.